Okay, so I'd like to uh, share with the community um, our efforts um, in developing redfish interoperability profiles. Um, my name is Rick Pioso, and I'm uh, working for Dell Technologies. So uh, I guess to begin, uh, you may want to answer the question, what exactly is a redfish interoperability profile? Um, so I borrowed this from a presentation um, from offered by the uh, uh, Distributed Management Task Force, the MTF Redfish Forum, which is cited at the bottom. Um, in summary, it uh, offers a common ground for redfish service implementers. And so in ironic terms, that would be typically um, folks that are implementing software that runs on a um, baseboard um, management controller, a BMC. Uh, client software developers, uh, which for us um, is folks that are working on uh, the drivers that are within Ironic and users. Um, so in our community, that would be um, typically operators. Um, folks like Arne's organization, CERN. So it specifies uh, within the profile, you can specify Redfish implementation requirements. Um, and, and those are requirements that the client software has on the Redfish service. Um, however, it's important to note that these profiles are not intended to mandate underlying hardware and software features of a product. It's strictly uh, meant to um, express um, what the interoperability requirements are between the client and the service. Um, the third point is that it provides a target for implementers to meet customer requirements. So the profiles can be used by those that are working on, for example, BMCs. Um, a, a target to enable them to deliver what it is that a customer, in our case, that would be Ironic, uh, needs from the service in order to work with Ironic. And then the next thing it, is, it does is that it provides baseline expectations for client software developers utilizing uh, Redfish. Um, so um, given, you know, given a profile that's been tested, um, the developer who's looking to add a bug fix or new feature functions to a piece of software could have an expectation that with the current profiles as they exist, that certain aspects of the service have been successfully tested for interoperability. So they, they can at least then rely on those aspects of Redfish to work. <clears throat> Of course, with new feature function, um, you know, additional requirements might be placed on the service and those will have to be expressed and tried. And then a nice, another thing to note, which is I think very significant for um, those that consume Ironic, uh, the operators, uh, it enables customers such as operators to easily specify Redfish functionality and conformance and requests for quotes. So it could be used as part of their, um, their acquisition process. And there at the bottom, I've cited the, uh, the presentation that um, um, I used to, to come up with this slide. Next, I'd like to briefly discuss Ironic's efforts to um, utilize uh, this Redfish interoperability profile tool. Um, we are, as a community, developing uh, profiles for the vendor-independent Redfish hardware type or driver. Um, it is a Wallaby release cycle goal to deliver these profiles. And the primary contacts are Arne, uh, Ricardo Pitao, and myself. And these profiles are designed to offer options to three distinct audiences operators, um, ironic upstream developers, and vendors. 
So let's dive in a little bit to discuss, or at least get an overview of the ironic redfish interoperability profiles that are being developed. From a high level, um, we are developing two types of profiles. Uh, what, I've, what I've called consolidated and composed. So a consolidated profile offers a, a very simple to use, sort of simple to use profile, um, which can help answer the question whether or not a BMC can interoperate with all of the vendor independent redfish drivers features. So it's sort of a, in a sense, an easy button. You press the button and it'll tell you, can any feature that I, that, that driver supports um, work against this service implementation on this BMC? The next one uh, I've called composed um, is assembled. It's assembled from multiple profiles, one per driver source code module. Now, bear in mind that typically in the ironic code base, um, each driver source code module, which is located in um, dot, dot, dot drivers, modules, and for example, in this case, Redfish, um, corresponds to a single um, or multiple interface implementations of the same sort of category. So for example, power uh, management, BIOS RAID, et cetera. So these, um, this, this composed profile, which is again assembled from multiple individual profiles, can be used as a pattern to, cr to create a custom composed profile that aligns with the interfaces the operator is using or plans to use. So in other words, an operator may decide, well, you know, I, I, I'm gonna use this Redfish uh, driver and point it at this BMC, but I've decided that I'm only interested in power and management uh, interfaces offered by Redfish. I, I don't have a need for BIOS RAID, you know, et cetera. So all I wanna do is test power and management. And so that can be done by basically uh, leveraging the, the composed one that will be upstream and modifying it to only be composed from the power and management uh, individual profiles. And that way you don't, the operator doesn't need to um, spend time um, testing functionality that they don't plan to use and as, as well as diagnosing and analyzing perspective issues that that testing might, might um, report. So the, um, the, per the per source code module profiles support a few things. Um, composition, which we just discussed, um, keeping pretty much all the profiles, but on an individual source code basis, um, that, that profile up to date with production code changes, be they bug fixes or the addition of new feature function. And then finally, um, it, it offers support for um, backporting profile changes to stable branches. So that would be mostly along the lines of uh, bug fixes. Um, so you could you know, easily follow the code changes and align them uh, with the individual um, per source code module profile. Finally, I wanted to share with um, with, with uh, everyone a bunch of references that I, I think are pretty handy. Uh, the first is, the first category or first group of them is, is offered by the Distributed Management Task Force, the DNTF. Uh, the first one is a presentation. It's a few years old, but I think it um, gives a good, a good overview of uh, what these Redfish interoperability profiles um, are about. The second one is a specification for um, that defines the actual profiles and, and their their um, syntax, the semantics, um, basically the, J, the the details of the JSON which um, uh, one needs to write in order to develop a profile. And then the the third one is a Redfish interop validator tool. So this tool um, basically takes um, a profile is, is you pass it, you tell it the name of the profile and you, you give it other configuration details like the IP address of 
um, the implementation, the service implementation of Redfish. And it will then go ahead and process um, that profile against that implementation, that service implementation, and report um, any issues that it finds. Um, so basically, it does uh, the interoperability testing and reporting. And then the other category um, of references that I've shared um, are from Ironic. Uh, the first one is the Wallaby release priorities um, specification uh, that lists this and describes this um, you know, very briefly as one of the uh, priorities for Wallaby. The second one is the storyboard story that's being used to track this work. And finally, there's a proposed Garrett change uh, that's, that's uh, still a work in progress, but that's quite, quite mature. Um, and that we're looking to land this cycle. So I'd like to, um, I was told this to be about five to 10 minutes. So I wanted to allow some time for questions. Um, does anyone have any questions? Thank you very much, Richard. Are there any questions? Uh, when do we expect this to actually be available for, uh, at least, when do we expect it to actually emerge, I guess is the better question. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so we, um, we've, we've done certainly a, a, a thorough pass of the source code um, and done some testing downstream uh, against Dell uh, EMC hardware. Um, the proposed changes have been um, reviewed multiple times by uh, myself and by um, Mike Ranieri, who is um, a co-chair of the Redfish Forum and has responsibility um, that he shares with Jeff Autor from HPE as, as another co-chair. Um, and he's been providing valuable feedback. There's still some some review comments that uh, are being reviewed um, from our initial downstream effort before we posted it to Garrett um, to make sure that things have been resolved and addressed. Um, and also there, there's probably a file or two of the individual module profiles that need to be um, you know, reviewed more thoroughly. Uh, specifically, I would say the, um, the boot interface um, profile for virtual media boot, um, since that's a relatively more recent uh, addition, and also the sensor support in management. So there's some management um, interface um, code review work that needs to be done. So that'll be um, certainly the focus, um, I'd say over the next uh, month, a month and a half. And in addition to that activity, we're hoping for some additional uh, hardware um, sort of experimentation of the profiles of, uh, against real hardware. Um, as I said, um, you know, we've, we've <clears throat> exercised it against Dell EMC IDRAC uh, implementations of Redfish and Arne has graciously uh, tested it against some hardware that um, he has access to at CERN. And I believe he's, um, you know, he has asked um, others to, um, if they if they're willing to uh, give it a try as well, and that would you know provide us a few data points as to you know the quality of the inter interoperability profiles. So I would say um, I think it's targeted as a um, a third release goal, right, Julia, uh, in Wallaby. I believe so. Yeah. So I'd say you know we should we should make that, and I'm hoping a bit earlier than that. Okay. Excellent. Um, I, I have a few more questions, which I may leave for the discussion after. One comment that I have, though, is that I guess that like once this is merged, that means that any code change that comes into comes to these modules will also also require, similarly to I know documentation changes, uh, a change or a check of the profiles and and how much they are affected by these changes, right? Yes, that's correct. And, and um, 
Exactly. The analogy is very apt. Um, it's sort of like documentation. Um, it's just mostly for, for reviews. When we get changes in this area, we have to remember similar to, okay, did you update the documentation accordingly? There should be some check and um, have you updated the profiles accordingly, accordingly if there's changes um, in the module. Right. I don't know, for instance, when they rely on additional functionality from the Redfish endpoint, for instance. Right, so any changes to drivers, uh, modules, Redfish um, would, would, should, should raise that question. You know, are there any Redfish interoperability profile changes that need to be made? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's, that's sort of part of the thinking behind the way we've decomposed this problem into individual profiles, one per source code module, is that the developer could then take a look at the, you know, do a code diff, right, between mm -hmm. the proposed change and the most recent one, um, and determine pretty quickly whether or, not, whether or not the profile, the existing one, already covers that. And if not, okay, well, now I know exactly, you know, what the additional requirements on Redfish are, and I need to express those in the profile and add them. And so they would first add them to that individual, let's just say for an example, um, they're changing, um, I don't know, management.py in Redfish. Um, they would first m modify the management profile. Um, and then um, based on the diffs there, they would roll them up um, into the, um, um, what did I call it? <laughs> um, the consolidated profile, mm -hmm. right? Because um, that basically the consolidated one is um, taking all the individual ones and boiling it down into one. Because there can be some redundancy, you know, across uh, interface implementations in terms of the requirements on Redfish, and so you call them out per interface, but then ultimately you just want it to be expressed once in the um, uh, consolidated profile. Right. Are there any more questions for Richard? If that's not the case, thank you very much again, Richard. Yeah, I guess I, I had one more thing to add okay. you know, with regards Perfect. to, you know, the code structure and code reviews going forward is that um, the hope would also be that um, other drivers would add these in time as well um, and that they would be able to leverage um, very heavily, these um, uh, vendor independent files. Mm -hmm. So, it, and basically, the way the code's been structured or organized, it um, it very much mirrors the way our driver source code is is structured. Cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.